Come on, shout it like a church shot. It's time. It's time. Ecclesiastes 3 and 1. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. Verse 2. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant, a time to plug up that which is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to get and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to cast away. Verse 7. A time to rent and a time to sow. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. Verse 1. To everything there is a season. And the time to every purpose under the heaven. Tell your neighbor, I have a time <laughs> and a season. No, you just don't, don't stop there. Shout to them and tell them, say, it's time. I say it again. I say it again. I say it again. You didn't catch it. You didn't catch it. I'm, I'm good with that. Tell your neighbor, I have a time and I have a season. Now tell them, it's time. my time, my time to get those things that I've been believing God to do. Let me talk to somebody. You thought God forgot. <laughs> you thought he forgot what you prayed 5, 10, 20 years ago. No, 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 no. God has an excellent memory. And he's about to bring those things. See, now you're able to handle it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now you have the muscle to carry the weight or the mantle that's been released over your life. And how you got that mental, how you got that muscle is all of the hell you've been through. All of the tested trials you've been through. All of the lonely nights you've been through. That's how you're able to handle what you're able to handle today. Somebody say, it's my time. It's my time. My time, it's my time, my time, my time. Now I'm not. Now for those of you that are struggling with this, and you feel like uh, a word about whether you were worthy of it, it's not about whether you're worthy or not. It's still your time. Yeah, I don't care what mistakes you made last night. God, it's still your time. God, God's grace and God's mercy that's renewed for you every morning has been covering you all these days. It didn't stop today. It's still your time. It's your time. So, so, so everything, there was a season and a time of, uh, to every, uh, and, and a time to every purpose yeah. under heaven. Watch this. He, uh, uh, purpose is translated into Hebrew, uh, your pleasure and your desire. Yes. Okay. Your pleasure or your desire. Yeah. It's your time to fulfill that thing that, bring, that, that brings you pleasure. Yeah. That thing you've been desiring from God. Somebody shout, it's time. It's time. Make a personal shout, my time. My time. Again, that Hebrew word for purpose is pleasure and desire. For everything, to everything, there is a season and a time to every purpose under heaven. Watch this. It is a fixed season. Fixed season. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. 
It's feet. You couldn't even work for this. It was already attached to your life before you even, before your mother gave birth to you. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Not, not for your good works and, and, uh, and not, not for your, your faithfulness and thank God for it. But no, it's, it has already been attached to your life. So it's a big season. It's a, it's a big season. So no matter what, listen, no matter what you're dealing with this morning, no matter what you're facing this morning, your season still going to happen. It's still going to happen. I don't care how messed up you think you are. It's still going to happen for you. It's a fixed season. Watch this. God operates in time. Yes. Jesus. Write that down in your heart. On your paper, on your head, your finger, whatever. But God operates in time. Watch this. God does not operate in our time. We're frustrated this morning because we've been operating and, and expecting God to move in our time. God, God, God created time. He was here before time was time. God is not bound by time. He made time. But he is a timely God. He does things by times and seasons. Not our chronological system. No, 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 no. But by his supernatural ability, by his sovereignty, by his power, he moves whenever he gets ready to move in his time. And God knows when it's time to move. I, I, we feel like we, we, we know better than God sometimes. God, I, come on now, come on. I'm about to lose my mind. God is saying, no, you're not. You got another year in this. You, you, you got five more days in this. Watch this. God is not moved by those 30 day notices you've been getting at home. They don't even, they, they, don't, they don't intimidate God, they don't scare God, they don't bring fear to Him. He can, because He's not bound by time. He's not bound by a 60 day notice, a 90 day notice, a threat notice. I'm going to come pick it up, get it notice. He's not bound by time. And what I found out, and I heard my bishop say this, God is not an all time God. Because we measure death by our own time. Uh huh. God never came through on the time you calculated. No. What was it a week later? <laughs> Two months later. Or three or four or five days earlier. He's not an on time God according to our calculations. But he is an on time God according to his. He, 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 he will never allow us to sink. He will never allow us to go under. He will never allow the enemy to come and overtake us. Why? Because, listen, because, because there is a time and there is a season that has been allocated for all of his people. And let me, I say it again prophetically, it is time. Every time I say that, you have to re uh, remember or, or know what your it is. What your it, what, what, what that it you've been struggling with, what, your, what that it you've been having, whatever it may be, but it is time for you to, to move from that to move to something else. It's, it's time for, 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 for restoration. It's time for you to, to get some things uh, back in order that you didn't think you had the strength to do. It's time. It's my time. So God operates in time. He's not bound by time because He created time, right? Right? Listen, you have to know, you have to know. What time and season you're in. You have to know that. You have to know. No. Honestly, and know this, know this, know this, know this. I'm going to get to the point. Uh, uh, know that you cannot control the time. Amen. You cannot control the time. And I don't care how long you've been reminding God how long you've been in it. You cannot control the time. God, I've been in this thing like 10 years and I need you to come see about me. And, and God is still on his throne saying, in due time. You cannot control. Let that, go ahead and get that settled on the inside of you. You, I cannot control the time. But the time, they're in God's hand. They're in his hand. There is hand. Although you may feel like it's time, uh, your time is up or your season is up, it's not up to you. It's absolutely not up to you. We've all been in a season or in a place uh, uh, one time or another in our lives that we felt like, okay, now this, and then I look, now come on God, now I've been this thing too long. Yeah. How long am I going to keep living like this? How long, how long am I going to keep struggling like this? So uh, my mind be, no, 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 no. Uh, but we're not, we're not, we're not in charge of the time. We're not in charge of the time. I want you to get that. We are not in charge of the time. Here, 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 here's some things that God told me to, to give you. Uh, 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 be, get very careful 
to not move before time. Or let me say it this way, to not move out of time. His time. Some of us can get so anxious, we can get so ready, we can get so frustrated that we begin to move and do things out of God's timing and we wonder why it brings added pressure, it brings frustration, you're more miserable now because you moved out of his time. And, what, and here's where we're going, you moved out of the rhythm of God. You moved out of the rhythm of God. Rhythm. Write this down, stay in the rhythm of God. Stay in the rhythm of not not your mama rhythm, not your daddy rhythm, not your husband or your wife rhythm. Stay in the rhythm of God, not your friends. Stay in the rhythm of God. There are some people that's trying to talk you out of your post, trying to talk you out of out of your your ministry or or your assignment. Stay in the rhythm of God. You don't want to break the rhythm. You don't want to break the rhythm. You don't remember, there are a lot of people functioning uh, in the body of Christ with a broken rhythm. They're just doing whatever they want to do, whatever pleases the flesh. But they're not in rhythm with the Holy Spirit, they're not in rhythm with the times and the seasons of God. Make sure you stay in the rhythm of God. That's, that is the only way you're going to be fulfilled. That is the only way you're going to get everything that God has predestined for your life is by staying in the rhythm. Rhythm is defined as a strong, regular, and repeated pattern of movement or sign. It's repeated. It's repeated. God is the same today as he was yesterday. He's not doing nothing new. There's a rhythm. There's a pattern he has. Okay, we have to be conscious. And we need the, the, the youth to help me with this part. I'll call you in a moment. We have to be conscious of staying on beat. I'm not talking about some of you that can't clap. That's okay. We, we can fix that. Now clap my clapping class. Clap <laughs> But staying in beat with God, staying in the heartbeat of God. Staying, staying, staying awake. Staying awake, knowing, knowing, you know what, where I am today is not where I'm going to be tomorrow. Uh, how I'm feeling today and what I have today is not going to be what God there is so much more in store for my life, so much more I'm headed towards, I will not allow what I'm facing today to distract where I'm going, because I'm going somewhere great, everybody going somewhere great you know you're going somewhere great, you absolutely know you're going to head somewhere great so don't allow for today to distract where you're headed because your head is somewhere great God got something so, so give well for every individual person in this place. But you have to stay in the rhythm of God. You have to stay on beat. All right, so what, this one I think is you, son. This I got to give to you. Uh, all of the youth, y'all come to the stage real quick, real quick. Put the phone down. Go to the stage real quick. <laughs> y'all, us, you got to them put the phones up. Come on, come on, come on. If you are a youth, come to the stage. Oh, oh, yeah, on the stage, on the stage. On stage, on stage, on stage, on stage, on stage. If you consider yourself a youth, <laughs> come to the stage. Come to the stage. Come to the stage. This is what God, God, God gave me this. Y'all kind of spread out a little bit. Yeah, y'all have to be all on each other. Y'all. There we go. Come on over to the brain a little bit. Straight line. Y'all, yeah, this is our future. I, this is our future. <laughs> so, so, so God says, I need my people, Nadia, to stay in rhythm. But my people, my, my ministers, my elders, my preachers, my teachers, my apostles, my, my bishops, they have all started dancing to a new or another beat. And it's not mine. They're dancing to the beat of platforms and opportunities. They're dancing to the beat of, 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 of doors opening or, or dancing to the beat of really not seeking my face anymore, but seeking the next engagement or the next assignment or the next organization. They're seeking something that, I'm, that I have not told them to seek. They're, they're, they're dancing to another beat. Uh, and this beat is not my beat. This is the beat of the enemy. This is the beat of delusion, the beat of, of, of frustration. Yeah, it's, a, it's a different beat. So they started off, all right, all right, all right so y'all ready? This is what I need y'all to do. I need y'all to clap. Okay? Now, I'm 
how I'm giving you the beat. So, see, see, see. Let me see you back there. See how we just got trapped and we didn't got the instructions? You got to wait for the rhythm, for the pattern. You got to wait for it. Y'all, y'all. Thank y'all for helping me teach this. All right, y'all do this. That's how you do it. Let's see. Come on. 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 Come on, Aaron. Oh, oh, Lord. <laughs> Come on. That's simple, right? It's simple. You concentrate on it. You can do it. It's easy. It's easy. It's easy. It's easy, right? It's easy. We can do it all day. All day. Keep going. What happened? Someone lost it. Lost come on, come on, come on. Someone lost it. They lost focus. Someone lost focus because of what? A different sign. A different beat was presented to them. And instead of them keeping the rhythm, something else sounded good to them. It was more fast. It sounded better. It's what everybody else is doing now. It's the millennial thing. It's, it's, the, it's the generational X, Z, Y, W, P, or whatever. It's, it's all of that. And it sounded good. It sounded better. You know, this is boring. Up, I can do better than this. I, I'm more anointed to do this. Uh -oh. All I'm doing is sweeping the floor. All I'm doing is setting up chairs. I can preach. I can pray. I can do all of that. I want to do this. I want to do that. That's my speed. But God said, I'm not there. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. And God said, if you are, if you are going to do anything for me successfully, you have to remain in rhythm with me at all times. I don't care what the world is doing. I don't care how good the world sounds or, or what everybody else is doing, whatever the other ministry is doing and, and how they're doing and they're growing and what. He said, that, that's not for you. This is, come on, y'all ready? Uh, uh, uh. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. You focus? You focus? You focus? Okay? Come on. And you stay. I didn't tell you to stop. So when God turned his back, you stop. <laughs> That's a whole nother message right there. You think God ain't looking, but his eyes are everywhere. Okay, that's, that, that, that's next week. Okay, come on. Keep going. All right, so, so stop there, stop there, stop there. All right, so, 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 so now just do this. We found the river. We found the river. We found the river. And God, because it's your time, and it's your season, and it's my time right now, now he can trust you with more. So what he started doing? He started going up fast. So you gotta catch up, catch up your foot. There you go, there you go. Uh-huh, and now you've been sowing, you've been giving, you've been praying, you've been faithful, he can go up fast. He can go up fast, uh-huh. But you got to recognize your time and you got to recognize your season. When God moves, you have to move. Because if I was doing this and you just doing this, you're going to miss God. And that's the problem with the body of Christ. We've been, we've been having great church, but we've been missing God. It takes nothing to have good church. Have a good praise team and a good musician. We have dance all around this place. Up to my tail stuff. But a real authentic move of God that's governed and operated through the Holy Spirit. Come on, come on. That, that, that's a whole new service. That's a whole new uh, power of service right there. That, that, that's that's life-changing service right there. You got it, you got it. But you have to stay and remain in what? 
rhythm. Tell you this, I think I'll find your rhythm. And stick with it. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Find your rhythm. And stick with it. How can I lose my rhythm? First point is not knowing who you are. How can I lose my rhythm? Not knowing who you are. You have an identity pro uh, 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 problem. And if you don't know who you are, yep. everybody can tell you who you are and you're going to believe. <laughs> People will give you an identity. Girl, you shouldn't do that. Boy, you shouldn't do that. You should do this. You should be that. And you will, you will, you will listen to it. You will, you will go after that because you don't know who you are. I heard uh, 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 Bishop Jake say this, and so powerful that 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 that, that it made us conscious to uh, prepare our kids for, for for college. So probably some of you hear this. Um, he said one thing that I did not do. I did not allow my child to go to college to find himself because he would have found all types of himself if he had a, if that had been left up to him. So what it was, he, he knew his identity before he left the house. So therefore he was more of an influence instead of being influenced. Got it? And, 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 and an influence is so powerful that, 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 that you could be on the post, you could be loving God, serving God, preaching and teaching, doing whatever you're doing, and if, and if you allow, influence will knock you completely off of your post. You will need to get You love church and you'll stop wanting to come to church. Jesus. Right. Not knowing who you are. Second point. Not knowing who he is. <laughs> Not knowing who he is will cause me to miss my step or get me out of rhythm. People, point three, will get me out of rhythm. Because people will always tell you what you should be doing, how you should be doing. You, you need to do it our way. Well, see, that way works for you. Yeah. It may not necessarily work for me. You need to try this. I'm not going to... Stop trying stuff, y'all. Yeah. God has not called none of us to be, uh, uh, to, to be around here experimenting on things. Yeah. And what I, mean, what I mean by that is... You don't know what to do. You're just trying everything. Your head is in everything. You're doing everything. You're ancient. You're, 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 I'm doing this. I'm doing that. Uh, I'm, not, I'm going to paint one day. Then I'm going to twirl one day. Then I'm going to twirl one day. And then, and then I'm going to go and start painting and twirling. And I'm going to be like, now you keep doing it. I'm going to give you an example. You're, just, you're in the front, so I got to use you. So, yeah, yeah. But, but God, God, says, God, says, God says, people will, 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 will cause you to be confused. If you allow them to. Well, I'm strong. Can't nobody. that. Okay. There is somebody in your life that has the power of influence in your life. And that's the very one the enemy will use. He will use that very one. Because what we say, because I, I trust that person. That, that person know they hear from God. And if they said it, oh Lord, I know it's going to, really? I'm not doubting you hearing from God, but can you hear from God for me? That's a big difference. It's a big difference, big difference, big difference. All right, the next thing, uh, what can cause me to miss my step or get out of rhythm is immaturity. Being childish in your mind. Immaturity. Immaturity. Because I want the popular thing, not the anointed thing. I want the popular thing, not the purpose thing. What you post, your statuses will get you out of the rhythm of God. God, and, and here's the question. The some of the stuff y'all be posting, would God post it? Mm. Ask yourself that before you, before you hit sin or, or whatever you do. Would God, I go, uh, I, let me go a little further. Would God be liking some of the stuff you guys like? Because here's what we got now. You ain't bold enough to say it. Because you know somebody gonna see it, so what it is, you will, somebody else gonna post it, and you you just like it. <laughs> now, matter of fact, you will love it, yeah. you know, because they are saying what you really want to say, you know. But would God like it? Would God love it? You know, you really trying to get your pastors and somebody, somebody in your church told that you, you, that they did something to you, but you don't want to just come out and say it. So what it is, if somebody's talking about some type of correction, and he has to sit down and stop abusing the people and stop talking about the folks and, and leave these folks alone, you will like it because it's something you really want to say. I ain't talking about y'all, I'm talking about the people across the street. That's something you really want to say. 
You really, really want to say it. So, so, but, but you're not going to post it yourself. You're just going to hit like. And you're going you're gonna to love it. And, you, and, 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 and for those of you that are real missing, you're coming at the bottom. You're coming, you know, woo, or something. Or, or them hand claps, whatever that emoji is, and, and all of that. You have a way of, 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 of promoting uh, the, 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 the Facebook, even if you don't type it yourself. Uh -oh. You have a way of doing it. And, and let, 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 me, let, let, me, let me say this. We ain't stupid. People are not stupid. People know, but, but that's the way that the enemy will cause you to get out of the rhythm of God. Because you're in your feelings. Or, one of my favorite, one of my favorite, one of my favorite. When people get mad at you, they stop liking your stuff. Oh, oh I'm sorry. I ain't talking about your I'm talking about y'all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't share them, fly it no more. <laughs> used to look, come on down here. This one of all this trouble right here. You better come down here. Two weeks we'll hear from you. Cause you mad. You upset. You upset. You ain't sharing nothing. You ain't like that. Ain't coming nothing. I'm talking about we got we got Rockers house going. We got all types of stuff. You ain't like nothing. Cause you mad. You upset. And then he, he, here's a my favorite one. I ain't Okay. <laughs> so, but, but we have a way. Those things will cause you to get out of the rhythm of God. Because now you're operating in a spirit of, 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 of tension and dissension and, and, and anything that's not utilizing the body is the enemy of God. And you're out of his rhythm. You're out of his beat. You found, you have officially found your own beat. And the only person that's dancing your beat is you and the devil. Hear me. The only person that's dancing to your feet when you are on an emotional roller coaster, mad at the world, frustrated, cussing folks out, getting people told, in love, all that type of stuff, the only person that's dancing to your music is you and the devil. And I wonder what type of party y'all had. How would that party leave you? All right? Last one, feel for me. What could cause me to miss my step or get me out of rhythm? Misguided passion. Misguided passion. I have passion, but it wasn't from God. My passion came from because I see somebody else doing it. It looked good, and I think I can do it. Do you know you can do something so well, and you can do it, and if you do it so well. That it'll look so easy to other people that they think they can do it. Like, like Robert, for instance. Robert can play so good. And I be sitting there sometimes and, and my fingers just, just get to going. Man. You know, I mean, I'm talking about, I mean, I, I, I see myself doing it, Lord. Why can't I just get up there and, and just do it? I, I know what he's going to go. I know what he's going to do with him. I know, but I can't do that stuff. And, and I have a, a crazy moment, but I think the Holy Ghost on me, and I get up here, get up school, Robert, because the Lord is in my fingers right now. Oh, the Lord is in my fingers, and I feel like He is just, oh, he, He's on me right now, and can't do nothing. That was for our but let me come down your road. You feel like bringing up your praying, 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 praying. I can pray. I pray just like that in my bedroom. I pray just like that in my shower. I pray just like that in, in my car. And, 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 and here you go. Uh, we up here praying. You tapping on me. Pastor, I got something to say. <laughs> okay. Say it. And all you can say is thank you, Jesus. Then you fall out. <laughs> Come on. This guy in passion. No. No, you have to be ready. You have to know. You have to know what time, what season you're in. You have to know. Listen. Uh, uh, Elder Mike has uh, been teaching Sunday school, and, 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 and Elder Mike is a, is a powerful preacher. And, 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 and you can be, listen to a teacher teach so well and, 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 and use words and use illustrations and use all type of stuff. Man, I can do that. I can do just what he do. I know some stories too. But you can't tell him like he can tell them. But there is something you're good at. That's something that only you can do. There is a passion God has given you. Now, it may not be, to, in your eyes, as glamorous uh, as, as, as the next, but it's still needed in the body of Christ. Yes. 
Come on, somebody said there is a time. There is a time. And there is a season. All right, all right. Uh, shout, I have a time. And my season is now. Okay. Now, 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 this, this, this is the ending part of it. Uh, you got the five steps. And so go, go home and study those. And here is the prophetic release God will have to release to you in terms of it's my time, it's my season, and my time is now, my time is now. Uh, God says in this time, in this season, in this, in this place we're in, you're in right now, he says you will find rest in the season of provision. You'll find rest. Good. It's not passing you by, but you're going to remain there. You're going to live there. The season of now, provision is not just limited to money. No. It's peace. Let me tell you something. Money can't buy no peace. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's joy. I'm talking about you really laughing for real. Not, not, not laughing to keep from crying, but you really laughing for real. You know, uh, 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 so, so you, you're, you're going to find rest in the season of provision. Provision is in this season. I want you to turn, to turn here. And, and this, is, this, is, this is a direct, direct word for those people, those of you that's been sowing. And it looks like, a, and, and last month we dealt with resting, or resting ain't easy. And, and one of those particular things that I did bring out is that when God had you in a place of just sowing and sowing and sowing, and you haven't really been received uh, been seeing a return um, in your sowing, uh, that this right now has switched and turned to that you're going to see the harvest of those seeds you've been sowing. Yeah, yeah. you're going to see you're gonna see a harvest. And listen, I'm not just talking about those who have been giving tithes and offering and, and, and seeds. I'm talking about just your serving. You know, you're here, you're serving, and you love God, and you've been witnessing, and you've been testifying, you know, all these things for the Lord. Now, there is a harvest that's here this morning that's going to be, listen, if you really get this word, get, get that harvest that belongs to you, I promise you, you're going to see the manifestations of it in Jesus' name. It's all just a me to say amen. In Jesus' name, you're going to see the manifestations of the harvest. Listen, go to John 6 and 9. John 6 and 9. Jesus had been teaching all day. People came from everywhere. And, 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 and when after Jesus stopped the church service, um, the people was getting ready to go home. But they, 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 from where Jesus was at and, and back to town was a long distance. And they had been with Jesus all day. Well, Jesus said, uh, the, the disciples come and say, well, listen, these people are hungry. He's paraphrasing. People are hungry. And Jesus said, well, go, go and go buy them some. Because Jesus wasn't broke. That's a whole other lesson, but he wasn't broke. So go, go, go feed them. It was too far. By the time we get there, they've been gone and just in the other. Well, that was a boy, a little young, young boy, that had two fish and five loaves of bread. And, and, and this little boy, somebody say a hidden miracle. Okay. This little boy, it was all he had. Two little fish. And you'll see how the, how the Bible talks about the loaves. And, and five loaves of bread. Let's, let's read it. And I promise you, I'm, 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 I'm done. There is a lad here which have five barely loaves. And two small fishes. But what are they among so many? We got so many people. We only got two fish and five loaves. Barely five loaves. And Jesus said, make the men sit down. Now there was much grass in the place. So the men sat down. In number about 5,000. Verse 11 says, and Jesus took the loaves. And when he had given things, he distributed to the disciples. And the disciples to them that were set down, and likewise of the fish, as much as they would. They ate as much as they could. When they were filled, he said to the disciples, gather up the fragments that remain, that nothing be lost. Therefore, they gathered them together and filled twelve baskets with the fragments of the five barrel loaves, which remained over and above unto them that had eaten. Okay, that was, that was a little boy. Jesus had a need, what the people had a need. Jesus used this little boy. All he had 
was two fish, five loaves. All you've been having is what you've been having to sow and, and been giving. You've been giving uh, to Rockers House. You've been giving to the new department, all these other departments. You've been giving your time. You've been sowing your heart and your, your, your prayer life and, 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 and your dedication. You've been sowing all of these things. I'm telling you, I'm talking to those people. You know you've been sowing it and it looks like you've been giving more. You've been getting. I'm telling you that this season of your life is about to change your life for the better. There has been no seed you've ever sowed that would ever go wasted. It will not go wasted. God remembers your seed. So this little boy, this little boy, he's not even mentioned anymore. But at the beginning of this text, there was a lad, there was a young boy, two fish, five loaves, barely five loaves, two fish, barely five loaves. Jesus, he got, fed the people till they got full. If you look at 13, it says, therefore, gather them together and fill 12 baskets with the fragments of the five barely loaves, which remain over and above unto them that they had eaten. Who had the five barely loaves? Who had the five barely loaves at the beginning of the... Go back to one, Jesus. Go back to one. Boy. Boy. Who had the five barely loaves? Who? That the boy. Who had the five? Who provided the food? Lad. Yeah, y'all ain't used to saying lads, just say boy. Who had who, who had who had the food? Lad. Right. And so Jesus at the end of it, after everybody had filled themselves up and and and, and, and they was gathering the breakfast, and he, he he refers back to what was first given to them. He refers back to it. He says this. He says, Therefore, gather them together and fill the twelve baskets with the fragments of five barrel of loaves which remain over and above unto them that have eaten. Now, watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Remember in 2 Corinthians 9 and 6, uh, 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 this is what happened. This is what happened. But, I, but this I say. Paul said this. He which soweth sparely shall reap also sparely. But he that soweth bountifully shall reap bountifully. Jesus said in Luke 6 38, Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down. And shaking together and running over, shall who? Men. Men. Who gave the boy the baskets? <sighs> who gave the boy the baskets? Shall men give unto uh, into your bosom for with the same measure, with the same with the same measure that ye meet without it shall be measured to you again. That was a promise as soon as the little lad or the boy gave unto Jesus for the disciples and for the 5,000 plus white men, the kids, the little dogs, the cats. That was a promise that, 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 that he stepped into. The Bible says if you give, it shall be given. So although the little boy gave two fish and five loaves, God gave him back 12 overfilled baskets. Holy Ghost, help them. God gave back five, uh, 12, 12 overfilled baskets, and it only came from two little fish and five loaves. Pastor Carolyn, watch this. Why didn't Jesus, when they were on their way to this location, if you read it, if you go back in and, and, and Luke uh, 5 and lead it to uh, chapter 6, the Bible talks about how they was approaching the sea. And where they were sitting at, this grass area was right by a lake. Why didn't Jesus just speak to the lake and call the fish to come out? We know, we've seen it later on that he could do that, right? We've seen later on that he told the fish to get in the next and the next rope. We know that he had that power. So why didn't he just listen? If we got to be these people, I'm God. I can do whatever I need to do. I can just I can go out there in the lake and y'all just hold y'all hands out and the fish going to jump in your hands. Why didn't he do that? Because listen, there was a hidden miracle he wanted to get to that little boy. <laughs> y'all listen. Y'all walk with me. There was a hidden miracle he's trying to get to you. That's why he asked you to do something. Oh, sure. He can use somebody else. Oh, sure. He can use another church. But he says, no, I want to use you. I want to use just what you got. You don't feel like you're worthy enough of God. Says, I want to use just what you got because I'm trying to get a miracle to you. Jesus, I'm trying to get you just to sow a little so I can give you a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to, I'm to, all I'm trying to get you to do is just give your two little fish. 
Jesus said so. So some men gather up and fill the 12 baskets with the fragments of what we started with. We started with only five. But now there's plenty for this little boy to take back to his family. There is something, I'm done. there is something that God has been, has been, has been uh, pressing for you to do. Yeah. In your heart, your mind, however it has been getting you to see or, or speaking it prophetically through somebody or something, or whatever the case may be. And, and it sounds crazy, it sounds weird. You don't know how, God, how are you able to get this out of that? And, and, and this ain't enough, but that ain't enough. God's not worried about uh, whether it's enough or not. You need to stop worrying about whether it's enough or not. He just needs your obedience. obedience. There are some baskets that have been filled for you. Hallelujah. some baskets that have been filled because of your obedience because of your love for him because of your desire just to please him there, there, there are some baskets that are overflowing you think you would never see a harvest you think you would never see a return but the devil is a liar it is your time and it is your season your time is now it is your season, your time, it is your time, it is your season to soar. It is your season, it is your time to complete, to finish something. Many of you have started something you have not finished. God said it's time to get done. Yeah. To get finished yeah. with what he has, he, has, he has commanded you to do. There is something, there is something, there is something. But again, whatever your it may be, may not be my it. But there is an it in your life. And God says, this is the time and the season for you to get it done. He says, he says, he says, when you give, it shall be given unto you. Not the same way you gave it, but it will be done in good measure. Press down, shake it together, and running over shall men give in, in to you. Shall men give in to you. So, so we're not worried about the next sister of faith conference because men are going to give into it. We're not worried about what we need to, to get our business started because men is going to give into it. We're not worried about uh, getting this, this big old multi purpose church building because men are going to give into it. If that was you, you should have said, I'm, I'm going to be that man that give into it. <laughs> Things. We're not worried about uh, the University of Life training center because men are going to give into it. We're not worried about the concert on next Saturday and the budget because men are going to give. Yes. Whether it comes through ticket sales or not, but men will give into it.